We are talking Dynasty Waiver Wire and much more on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode of Locked On Dynasty is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick between two and five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. Welcome to the Lockdown Dynasty Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, how are you today? Uh, a little under the weather, to be very honest with you, but <laughs> fighting through it. And this is my last uh, speaking engagement of the day. So let's dig in, man. This, this waiver wire stuff is actually kind of interesting this week. We do have some interesting yeah. ones. We've got some some more injuries, unfortunately. We've got some uh, players potentially losing their jobs. So we are starting our conversation with waiver wire options in your dynasty league, just like we always do on Tuesdays. And Matt, we, I mean, we've got to talk about the Jets. This this Zach Ooh. Wilson thing is a disaster, and it's it's not just that. Um, you know, that he's struggling and, and maybe they'd be better off with Joe Flacco or Mike White. And you know, I would recommend picking, picking honestly, both of those guys up yeah, I thought uh, the same. in your, in your dynasty super flex leagues. But really when you're thinking long term for the Jets, this is just, it's just another one that they've gotten wrong. And I mean, it's, it's just brutal to be a Jet fan right now. They continue to spend day one and day two picks on on these quarterbacks and just disappointment after disappointment i i looked back uh, a couple days ago at this or you know, following the game on sunday and i mean i think their last decent quarterback they drafted was was chad pennington wow uh, you know and that was i mean we're talking 22 almost 23 years ago when pennington was drafted on day two and uh, i mean Sam darnold and Mark Sanchez, I guess, you know, Sanchez had had some success there, but still didn't live up to expectations. So, I mean, Zach Wilson, we're just sure he's not the answer at this point, right? I mean, I said this on Peacock and Williamson today, that, hey, Patriot and Jets fans, you know, they played each other. Both their quarterbacks are in right. a bad spot right now. Wilson worse, obviously. But I said – Look at the other two quarterbacks in the AFC East, Miami and Buffalo. When they were a year and a half in, were we sold or the slightest bit confident on Allen or Tua? I mean, these guys are a year and a half in, Mac and Wilson. And I thought Allen was a disaster at this point of his career. I had massive doubts if Tua was even a starter. Now, there's no signs to say that Mac Jones or especially Wilson are going to be the next Josh Allen, but patience is important here. They also were my least favorite two quarterbacks in that class coming out, too. You know, I wouldn't have taken them where they were at. So, at a minimum, I think you have to make a move, and Flacco or White, I think, could produce throwing to Garrett Wilson, and we actually saw a little bit of Elijah Moore. It's not a bad spot for a, a guy to come in. But is this like a Derek Carr landing spot next year or a Jimmy G or something like that? I think it definitely could be. Um, uh, we heard um, some whispers about Derek Carr landing there, about mm -hmm. the Raiders potentially cutting him to save some money following this season. I mean, he's been uh, – he and that Raiders team have been a disappointment as well. So maybe that's a Carr landing spot. There's still the 49ers ties. Um which which kind of pair up Garoppolo to uh, that current Jets coaching staff, so th that kind of makes sense as well. We're we're almost certain that Garoppolo will be gone, but yeah, I mean it just can't be Wilson. I've I've got Zach Wilson on a couple of dynasty rosters, Superflex, and 
I mean, honestly, these are both actually contract leagues. It's, it's tough to get rid of them just like it will be yeah, for the yeah. Jets. Um, I mean, I would, I would pay somebody to take him off my roster at this point. That's, that's how bad, how badly I want to get rid of him. I think Jet fans would probably agree with me. And it's not just the on-field play. You know, it's it's everything that we heard about as far as yeah. taking responsibility or, or I guess not taking responsibility for the poor play and doesn't exactly seem to be well-liked in the locker room. So, I mean, Joe he's Flacco, almost at Osweiler level where I'll give you a second-round pick to take him off my hands. Yeah. Yeah, it may may end up <laughs> happening something like that. Joe Flacco and Mike White uh, both be waiver wire targets in those dynasty super flex leagues. Uh, Bryce Perkins is another option. We're digging pretty deep here, but uh, deep. you you may be this desperate. Uh, Perkins came in to take over for Matthew Stafford as Rams quarterback. Uh, Stafford apparently suffered his second concussion in as many weeks. Uh, which is obviously bad news. And uh, I mean, that team is going nowhere fast. It looks like Cooper cup is probably done for the year. Those uh, that timeline continues to change even after his injury over a week ago. I don't expect to see cut back on the field and I'm starting to wonder if we see Matthew Stafford back on the field. Uh, Perkins can't really throw the ball, but he can run adds a little something with his legs. Yeah, we're digging super deep, though. I mean, I can see Stafford getting shut down. Right. Yeah. Uh, running back is a little more interesting. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw out the name Latavius Murray. I don't think he's on many dynasty waiver wires. He's he's been in that. Um, he's been a part of that Broncos backfield now for uh, for several weeks, uh, and now he might have the backfield to himself. We saw Melvin Gordon uh, get released or, or waived, I guess on monday what what's your thoughts on that move and any any landing spots you like specifically for gordon hmm i hadn't really thought of landing spots to be honest with you but i would imagine he gets scooped up quickly there's probably sure. five to seven teams that could use them contenders um but murray just the fact that he's going to get volume i think you go all in on him now i mean it's a bad offense he's not a great player but there's really no very little competition yeah, we'll see what happens with Gordon um, because of the timing of the uh, transaction. Gordon does have to go through the waiver wire or mm-hmm. through the waiver process, so um, it's he, he can't choose his own team here. Most likely, he will get claimed. I would think. I, I don't think that contract is uh, is too prohibitive at this point. So uh, we'll we'll see if a bad team scoops him up before one of the contenders gets their chance, but uh, certainly. If, Latavius Murray is still out there in your league. Grab him. He was a uh, he was an RB one this past week, so uh, can still can still put up some fantasy points. Yeah. Samaje P Ryan is another guy. Uh, of course, the Bengals backup. We saw Joe Mixon suffer a concussion as well. Hopefully, he's back on the field next week. But uh, really, when when we're talking head injuries, we can never assume uh, anything. Three other backup. Real quick backs. on P. Ryan. I mean, at least he oh, showed sure. that if Mixon were to miss time again, you know, he's the workhorse. You know, that there's not going to be an Evans or any of those guys involved. Well, I think Evans Evans is banged up as well. He's hurt. I'm, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was active, but um, yeah, you're right. He P. wasn't Ryan for this game. No. Yeah, it, P. Ryan handled the uh, entire workload, three receiving touchdowns, and uh, ran the ball pretty well also. Uh, three other backup running backs who are getting some playing time and are worthy of a roster spot in deeper leagues. Bears rookie Tristan Ebner, he's the uh, he's the number two there in Chicago mm-hmm. with, uh, with Herbert on the IR. Kyron Williams, we talked about him last week, Rams rookie. And Zach Moss looks like the clear number two for the Colts now. Matt, when we come back, we'll talk about a few <coughs> other waiver wire options along with some, uh, some some trade value of some players we're very interested in. Very fun. Uh, folks, Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can bar- book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. You browse through a massive selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV if you want. 
Um, every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Folks, I also wanted to tell you about prize picks. We, we've had a lot of discussion about these guys, and I've done really well with prize picks. And, and what you do is you pick between two and five players, and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks project, projection, and you can win up to 10, 10 times your money on any entry. So what I love about it is you're not competing against other people who just happen to get lucky. It's just you versus the projections. Um, they offer projections of any sport that you watch and many that you probably don't. I mean, of course, NFL and NBA and college football, but tennis, boxing, disc golf, cricket, Euro basketball, women's college basketball, anything you can imagine. Soccer. Soccer is big right now. Um, entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. The withdrawals are safe and easy. Uh, they're currently operational in over 30 states right now, as well as in Canada. So download the prize pick app or go to prizepick.com and sign up to play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars with promo code locked on. So if you deposit a hundred bucks, prize picks gives you a hundred bucks. You deposit 50 bucks, prize picks will give you 50. So don't forget to use our promo code, though, locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter to the big stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked on Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Matt, a couple other waiver wire options to consider this week. Uh, wide receivers, Demarcus Robinson. We saw him with a big game uh, for the Ravens. And, of course, this team is, is struggling to move the ball in, in the passing game. Lamar Jackson has, uh, I don't know, he, he, does, he hasn't looked the same since the uh, first couple weeks of the season. And Mark Andrews obviously has been banged up. He was he was back, but uh, Demarcus Robinson looked like the wide receiver one in that offense for the moment. Uh, just 28 years old. I uh, think of him yeah. as a uh, as an old guy. But he's got a little bit left in the legs for sure. Justin Watson playing well for the Chiefs, and that uh, that receiving core, of course, is banged up. Uh, Hardman out. Juju was out on Sunday. Uh, and Watson stepped up well. He's almost certainly on your waiver wire. And Matt, this one, this one stings. The guy Wandell Robinson torn ACL. Oh, man. His rookie season is over. Uh, he was enjoying the best game of his uh, his young career, and he's now done for the, done for the season. Uh, Richie James, Isaiah Hodgins, couple of uh, veterans who might see some additional playing time. I mean, the Giants. You know, it's it's not just Wondell, uh, what Sterling Shepard out for the year as well. They've had so many injuries to that receiving core. Uh, the hits, unfortunately, just keep coming for them. Uh, we talked about the, the Rams and the injuries. Due to Atwell, um, young guy out of Louisville made a big touchdown catch for the Rams on Sunday. I mean, this is this guy. You know he's he's just so he's so tiny, Matt. He's tiny, I don't, yeah, right, right. I, yeah, I don't I don't necessarily see a uh, a lot of long term upside with him. But uh, if if Cooper Cup is indeed done for the year, maybe I will get some some additional playing time. We'll we'll see what happens with that one. Um, he then, at least has some hand. pedigree and he has an opportunity, right? But I mean, he yeah. might be catching passes from Bryce Perkins, so. <sighs> Kendall, <laughs> the last guy here to uh, to be aware of, uh, Broncos wide receiver, former Broncos quarterback, at least for one week uh, a couple of years ago, if you remember that. Uh, he's playing well with Jerry Judy out of the lineup. Yeah, he did. And he would be worth an ad for sure. Uh, of, of that group, I think Demarcus Robinson is probably my priority. Uh, thoughts on that? Oh, group, without a Matt? doubt. Yeah, I yeah. think Robinson's someone you go in on. I mean, uh, I, I think Baltimore – through more than they should. I mean, sometimes they forget their roots and what they are, and they played a very close game against a Carolina team that just got blown out by the the, the Bengals. 
Um, so I don't know that this will probably be Robinson's best day of his career of his season, but yeah, he might be fair. the number one for the Ravens. So that has value. Yeah, Duvernay has played well also, mm-hmm. but uh, Robinson kind of stepped up on Sunday. Matt, I also wanted to check in, uh, moving away from the waiver wire talk. I wanted to look at some trade value. We always talk dynasty transactions here on this Tuesday episode. Uh, I wanted to look at some trade value of some of the players who are done for the year. Uh, okay. We talked about injuries to Cooper Cup. Looks like his season is over. Kyle Pitts suffered a knee injury. His year is done as well, along with Wanda Robinson. Uh, those those guys are, are done for the year, but those, those are kind of new injuries. I wanted to look back on some players who have been out a while. Um, we, we almost always suggest buy low on these players when they're injured, and their value in, in almost every case will bounce back. So now that we're a few weeks out, a um, couple months out in some cases from these injuries. I wanted to check the latest trade value for three big names. Let's start with Javante Williams. We talked about Melvin Gordon's release and Latavius Murray. Uh, the Broncos traded for Chase Edmonds. Obviously, um, you know, having a hard time replacing Williams and the production that he would have given them this year as he's missed almost the entire season with that knee injury. Um, b- before we get into some of the trades that have gone down involving Javante Williams, what's your take on him? I know you were super high on him uh, coming into the season. He was one of your favorite was, uh, favorite yeah. players and one of your favorites to be possibly even the Dynasty RB1 at some point soon. Now that we're a couple months out from that injury, what are your thoughts on Javante? Yeah, uh, I, mean, I think it was you that mentioned how bad the injury was, though, and used some J.K. Dobbins comparisons, which soured me. It just sticks in my yeah, head. That's, is That's scary. It's really scary, especially as physical as he runs. Um, as much as I love the player or love the player, he's kind of a stay away for me now because if you mix that with Russell Wilson's going to be the quarterback, I, I think there's a head coaching change in order. You know, they just dumped Gordon, which I think is more of a symbolic, hey, we're not going to tolerate how terrible this thing's going now. Like, I just think it's yeah. an awful situation. Yeah, I mean, you, you do wonder, as as bad as things have been this year for the Broncos, you wonder if they can get it turned around um, by next season when, when hopefully Williams will be back and uh, – Definitely remains to be seen if he'll be ready for the uh, for the beginning of the regular season or not. Matt, we've got some recent trades here, and um, again, the suggestion is is almost always buy low. The issue that I've seen with Javante Williams and with a couple of the other guys that we'll talk about here, the price hasn't really dropped that much. So I'm, I'm not sure that you're getting a huge injury discount yeah. in, in many of these deals. Uh, here, here we go. First one, you are getting the discount, and and this is a pretty easy one. Devontae Williams for Dalton Schultz, even up, one-for-one one deal. I mean – That's lunacy, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're taking that deal. And and for the record, I pulled uh, five most recent trades from the DLF Dynasty Trade Finder. So, no uh, – you know, we're, we're just yeah, taking, we're taking recent, the most right, right. recent one. Yeah. Doesn't mean some uh, on the other end isn't real bright, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're certainly uh, taking a chance on Devontae if it only costs Dalton Schultz. Uh, the next one, kind of a package deal, and I think I still want Javante here. wanted to see what you thought. Javante Williams on one side. The <coughs> other is Cortland Sutton, Kadarius Toney, Speaking Deontay of Foreman. Yeah, another, another injured receiver. Uh, Deontay Foreman and a 2023 second rounder. So you get Sutton, Toney, Foreman, and the second rounder, is that enough for Devontae Williams? I'm so down on Tony, I can't consider it right now because I love this guy, and every time I buy in a little bit more, he breaks my heart. So he's in my doghouse. Yeah. So yeah. I'll take Williams. I also don't think Foreman's going to have any value two years from now. You know. Yeah, so, yeah I agree with that. Williams. The second, the second rounder is nice, and and again, yeah. I don't know where that's going to be. We don't have a first rounder for for Javante in this in this set of trades, but would you pay would you pay a late first 
for Javante I don't think. right now. I think I'd roll the dice on whatever back is there. See, I, th- I think that's probably where I'm at as well. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, even though this is not this trade doesn't necessarily look appealing, Tony Hurt again, Foreman, probably just a short term option. You're getting, that adds up to more than a first round pick. Yeah, you're getting Cortland Sutton and you're getting a second rounder. Maybe maybe that deal's better than I thought it was at mm-hmm. first. If you have the I'm, roster I'm space too, myself, you know. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I'm talking myself into the package there, especially if you're a contender and you know mm-hmm. maybe you can use Foreman down the stretch. I think that's what I'm thinking, right? And Tony on the has value. This one. Yeah, I yeah. think you've talked me into it. And if I'm not going to do it for first. And you're going to give me a second and all that other stuff, I guess. Javante Williams, along with Gerald Everett, he doesn't change the trend too much for Brandon Ayuk, Jeff Wilson. So Ayuk and Wilson mm. for, for Javante. I, I'm kind I'll of an Everett it. fan, actually. <laughs> okay. What, what I, was that? Oh, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm taking Williams here pretty easily. I, I am I've, too. I've been impressed with Ayuk. I'm, I still want Javante here. I think Ayuk's a tremendous football player, but he's not in a great spot to produce week after week. I'll still roll the dice on the young back. We've got one going the other way, adding to Javante Williams. It's Williams plus a first rounder for Squan Barkley. I guess I'll take Barkley. I mean, he's going to have a, uh, I mean, in a redraft situation, that's how, how we usually look at backs. Barkley has so much more value, obviously. Yeah, I'll take Barkley as well. And last one, Javante Williams for Joe Mixon. I understand both sides of that. Yep, uh, that's that's what I was going to say as well. That, yeah. that probably makes sense with a contending team, maybe a rebuilding team. Good good trade there. So uh, overall, the the Javante Williams price a little, maybe a little lower than I thought it would be. Certainly yeah. Schultz, uh, Ayuk. If those are the main pieces you're getting, uh, go to, <clears throat> go check the price, check the trade market on Javante Williams in your league. Matt, when we come back, we'll talk about two other injured stars. Folks, I killed it today or last weekend on betonline.net. I, I saw that under of Patriots Jets a mile away, hit it hard, and was fantastic. Can't can't complain. So Bet Online's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis. They got a lot of stuff going on there. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Football, basketball, soccer, esports. They've got it all on betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, which you probably do, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use the mobile device to learn more, which is simple and very easy. Bet Online, where the game starts. Matt, let's continue talking about some injured stars. We talked to Javante Williams. Another injured running back, rookie Brees Hall, and of course we know um, we know Hall, what Hall's value had done prior to that injury, ascending to the dynasty RB one in the opinion of many people. Uh, his price hasn't dropped much. Brees Hall and Mike Gesicki for Mark Andrews. What side do you want there? That's a tough one because there's such yeah. different styles of assets. But I actually think Gesicki moves on after this year, and his value grows. Maybe when he signs with a new team, you dump him. You know, I guess I'll take Hall. Yeah, what we're what we're almost certain of is that uh, Brees Hall, any value he has lost, he will regain. So, mm-hmm. um, definitely not a player you have to sell low on, or that you'll find many other people selling low on. Uh, Brees Hall and Gerald Everett. He's been a popular uh, yeah, really. option in these trades. Brees Hall plus Gerald Everett for Travis Kelsey and Chris Godwin. This looks like another uh, similar, uh, another classic trade of win now versus uh, rebuilding or, or playing for the future. So uh, I, I get that trade, um, and probably probably makes sense for both sides. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Godwin to me is holds a lot of value in this, though. So I probably lean that way in a vacuum. I think this one is a little too light. Brees Hall, along with uh, Justice Hill, obviously a throw in there for Drake London and a future third rounder. It's I'm essentially Hall there. It's essentially Brees Hall for London. I, I think I want Hall there. I do too, easily. Brees Hall for Travis Etienne. Hmm. Hall. 
I think I'm going the other way. I think I'll take right. ETN there. Yeah, Especially if, do, again, if I'm contending and, and need that production right now. And the last one is certainly a case of that Brees Hall for Christian McCaffrey. Same deal, right. If you're in it to win yeah. it, then you can turn that into McCaffrey and that might get you a Super Bowl. Fantastic. Vice versa, if you've got a terrible team and you're sitting there with McCaffrey, man, if you could turn him into Brees Hall, you'd be very happy. Last guy to talk about here real quickly, Matt, Trey Lance. And, and these are all from Superflex Dynasty Leagues. Lance's value, based on these trades at least, is all over the map. You can, dic- you can get uh, Dak Prescott for him. He goes for Amari Cooper even up. He goes for Damian Pierce along with Carson Wentz. And then one was Geno Smith and Jeff Wilson for Trey Yeah. Lance. I'm like, so I'm, I'll take the Lance side on that one. Yeah, I certainly will as well. I think there's just a lot of uncertainty about uh, what Trey Lance will will ever be. And, and honestly, if he'll uh, even have the opportunity to be the 49er starter next year. So seeing what we've seen from Garoppolo from that team, where are you on Trey Lance long term? I would certainly cash him out for Dak, who I think is an underrated asset right now and is playing better than his fantasy numbers indicate. Um, what do the Niners have to do to stick with Jimmy and turn Trey Lance into Jordan Love? I mean, they have to win a couple playoff games. They have to win the Super Bowl. I still lean towards Lance being the guy there next year and Jimmy not and, being back. And even if they want to go that route, it's not going to be easy to keep Jimmy. He's, he's right, not right, under right. contract. They, they can't franchise tag him based on the – uh, the, the changes they made to his contract. So um, he, he's going to be looking for another big payday. And, and I doubt the 49ers will be giving that to him. Right. Just doesn't quite add up. That will do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Remember to follow the show at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL and I'm Ryan MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked on Dynasty.